Moin, I'm Catherine and today I'm in bed with my favorite books of the month of June. I've read and listened to 21 books all in all. There were DNFs, I'm not going to go into them, but I'm going to tell you about the books I really liked. First off, I've listened to The Last Emperor by John Scalzi, which is the last part of the Interdependency Trilogy. And the books are all about this system called the interdependency. It's like after Earth, the humanity people had to leave Earth. And they live on several, several planets. And those planets are interconnected through the flow, which is something where spaceships can travel really fast. And the clue is that there is only one planet that can exist Independently, all the other planets are dependent of each other and now they discover that the flow is going to end or change so the planets will not be as connected as before and exactly as this happens, the last emperor, the previous or then current emperor dies and his daughter, Cadenia, becomes emperor more or less against her will and um, she has to deal with all the stuff with the flow. There are a lot of intrigues and the whole trilogy just has brilliant characters. And I was listening to it and I saw there's only one, one, one hour left. How is he going to wrap this up in one hour? And um, he did it. It's brilliant, funny, as always. And the audio version is, as almost always, with the John Scalzi books, read by Will Wheaton. What else do you want from life? I gave this four out of five stars. Then I've read The Nickel Boys by Colson Whitehead. This is the German edition. So this is about this boy who supposedly gets caught stealing a car, which he didn't do. He just was in this car and didn't know that the car was stolen, but nobody cared. So he was sent to a reform school. And the reform school, I have to look that up in my notes. Like in this book, it's called The Nickel Academy, but it is based on the Florida School for Boys scandal, where they found many many corpses on this old school ground and they are still trying to discover how much abuse has taken place at that school and who the corpses belong to who the people were who the boys were that died there so this is based on the school and on the abuse that is taking place there and especially about this boy who finds a friend um the boy is heavily abused also because they have a very racial system. So they have the white building and the black building and the black pupils are like way more abused than the white pupils. And he is about to get killed from the abuse. So his friend tries to break him out. Only one of them survives during the breakout so the story is split between what becomes of him later in life and the days back in school and what happened. And it was super interesting. And I gave it three out of five stars. Then I've listened to Troublemaker by Leah Romini. And I have to admit that I never watched King of Queens, but somebody recommended this to me um, because of the Scientology background. Um, because this is about Leah Remini's story, how she broke out of Scientology. And I thought it was truly amazing. She's a very courageous person. Four out of five stars. I'm always interested in stories that deal with how to break free from a religious background or a sect background, a cult background. Um, so, yeah, if, if you are too, and even if you are not, I highly recommend this. Then I've read my next Telgemeier, Sisters, and I loved The Smile, the first one I've read, another one that is not connected to those three that belong together, like the uh, Smile Sisters Guts, and I loved it a lot. So I'm always keeping these like for a rainy day when I feel a little blue and I need something that makes me feel better, which those always do. I still have two left, but if you like know graphic novels, like mid-grade, easy, 
happy life <laughs> no, uh, graphic novels similar to this one, please recommend in the comments because I'm going to run out of them soon. I'm, 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 I'm keeping them. I'm keeping them for when I need them, but I'm going to need them sometime. So please recommend stuff to me. Three out of five stars. Then I've read The Levers by Liza Ko. This is about Deming. His mother is Chinese. He is born in the US, um, grows up in the US, and one day his mother disappears. So he gets adopted by this American couple, and they rename him David. And without any malice, they completely ignore his cultural background. They completely ignore what it will do to him to rename, to actually rename him. They just think he will have it easier in life if he has a nice American name. And so this is about how de he deals with that, also with the loss of his mother. Later in the story, we get to know why his mom disappeared and about her life and how the loss of each other inflicts them. And this was especially interesting, again, in terms of race and how naive people get exploited. And I liked it very much. I gave it four out of five stars. Then I finally read Die Tage mit Bumerang by Nina Sam, who I already had for an interview on this channel. So I'm going to link the channel to that interview in the corner. We also did a book talk. I'm just going to link that one too, which is really worth looking, watching. Watching. My English is so confused today. Um, if you understand German, because it's in German. This is also in German. So if you don't understand German, you can just skip to the next book. I'm not going to talk too long about this. Um, this is about this woman, Anu, whose father dies and she's still dealing with his loss when she accidentally heavily injures her best friend's son in an accident and how she tries to deal with the guilt she by accident adopts a sheep that ends up in her garden and um, the sheep is called boomerang so this is why this is called the days with boomerang and she also finds a new friend and learns to deal with her guilt and i gave it three out of five stars So this is one of the books that was hyped so much everywhere that I was really afraid to read it. But in this case, I can honestly say the hype is completely deserved. It's about this girl who lives in the Bronx. Uh, she's from Dominican descent and she discovers slam poetry as a way to express herself. It's especially about her struggle with her very religious upbringing and finding herself in that about her relationship with her mother and if you have not read it yet the poet x by elizabeth Acevedo, beautiful wonderful fantastic four out of five stars so if you have watched any of my book videos before. You seldom find me giving out five stars because I think five stars, I mean, you know, it's like the best rating you can give. You, you cannot just give this to every book. This, Rodham by Curtis Sittenfeld is a five star read. This is about Hilary Rodham who does not marry Bill Clinton, so she does not become Hillary Clinton. And what may become of the person Hillary Rodham if she would not have married Bill Clinton? And she tries to run for president when she in real time tries to run for president, but in a very, very different way, because in this scenario she was not married to Bill Clinton. She meets Bill Clinton, she has a relationship with Bill Clinton, but she breaks up with him because he's sleeping around too much. And 
I just found this so super interesting. It also has a nice turn with Trump actually also playing a role, but a completely different role than what sadly happened in this time and universe. I just was like a little bit, Hillary comes, in my opinion, off way too good. Way too good. But this is a hypothetical. What would have happened if, if she would not have been influenced by her life and by her political influences due to being the wife of so who knows who knows what may have become of her uh, it's 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 fantastic it's fantastic Rodham by Curtis Sittenfeld please go read okay so sadly I'm running out of time here because Reaper One Festival the next band will be here in five minutes so I'm just going to tell you Out of the three Wayfarers novels that you can absolutely read independently from each other by Becky Chambers, this is my absolute favorite. It's about an artificial intelligence that ends up in a body, how she deals with being limited by this body. And uh, it has super nice characters. I love the world the whole series plays in because the world is really, really diverse. So um, if you're into... No, even if you're not into into sci-fi too much, um, I can recommend the Wayfarer series. And again, this is my favorite. It's called A Close and Common Orbit, and I gave it four out of five stars. Trevor Noah, Born a Crime, three out of five stars. The band is here. Three out of five stars, super interesting. If you don't know Trevor Noah, just find him on YouTube and Instagram. He's a late night host. And this is his uh, up bringing upcoming in South Africa during apartheid. Super interesting. Go read three out of five stars. The last one, Pet by Akweke Emezi. This is about this girl who accidentally calls a creature into being, and this creature tells her that in the house of her best friend, somebody is being abused. So she tries to find out what's going on and this is about her struggle keeping this creature a secret from her parents it's super beautifully written it deals with a lot of topics it deals with abuse obviously it plays in a world that supposedly has gotten rid of all its monsters but then they realize that you can never be too uncareful Did I mention my English is gone today? I gave it four out of five stars. Please read it. I especially laughed because the main character is a transgender girl and it's just like mentioned in in a side note as if in this world nobody nobody cares. It just doesn't matter. Nobody. It's If you're transgender, you're transgender and I really do hope that we get there someday soon. And talking about transgender people, if you have not watched Disclosure on Netflix yet, I highly, highly, highly recommend it. It's about how transgender people have been characterized in Hollywood, in Hollywood, in Hollywood so far. And it's super interesting and it brightens your horizon even more. I was deeply ashamed. I'm not sure if I said this in the last video. I was deeply ashamed because there were like films and TV shows that I have watched. And I was wondering, Did I realize it in this moment? Although, like, I've been doing gender studies for a while. I did them when I watched some of those things. And I, I'm still not sure if I was, like, completely aware of what's happening. So, truly interesting to also reconsider your own behavior and reception of what's going on in the media. Disclosure. Watch it. And on this note, that's a wrap up. And as always, do not forget to support your local independent book dealer, especially in these times. Moin, I'm Catherine and today I'm in bed with Laura Set. Hi. So we are here to talk about a book I love very, very much. It's called Tell the Wolves I'm Home by Carol Rifka Brun. 